Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our great engine openings and our crazy Lila series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and this time we are taking a look at the very solid semi Tarash. I do apologize if I look a little bit blue. I'm recording this and there's quite a lot of bright light in the background so uh, it's making me slightly transparent I think but uh, anyway hope that doesn't put you off too much. The semi Tarash. Now actually crazy Lila didn't really come up with anything crazy against the semi Tarash. It's probably the most solid black defense to um, uh, to 1d4. Um, however, what Leela did suggest was quite an interesting line uh, that transposes back into a Queen's Gambit accepted normally. And uh, I've had quite a bit of fun with it. So let's have a look at how that went. So the semi Tarash is d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, and now c5. And now, um, yeah, c takes d5, and then c takes d4 has got very popular recently. So Lila recommends the, uh, the quieter e3, which has also been played quite a lot now at, uh, at top level. And one of the ideas that, uh, that black can play is to play the move a6. We play the move a3, you know, both sides being a bit cagey, uh, just delaying developing this bishop, hoping to take on c4 in one go. And then eventually black bites and um, uh, plays d takes c4. And we're actually back into um, a queen's gambit accepted, where white has played this slightly unusual plan of a3 and bishop a2. Now, I never really thought that that was um, too dangerous, but um, uh, yeah, Leela sort of suggested this line, so I had a little bit uh, of a look at it, thought, you know, how could I play it? And uh, one of the ways I always think about um, the Queen's Gambit Accepted, and that comes because, you know, when I was professional, I played both the Queen's Gambit Accepted against 1d4 and the Nidorf against uh, 1e4. Yeah, I always try and think of it uh, in a bit of a Nidorf way. And then I came up with quite an interesting uh, attacking plan for white. And, um, well, you know, if Black um, uh, knows what, uh, what he's doing, then um, he can deal with it. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of false friends, really. If you make comparison to standard Queen's Gambit accepted lines, you're going to get a bit confused. Um, so let me show you how that works. It's castles, knight bd7, and now this little move, rook e1. What's the idea of rook e1? The idea is just to play e4 and then either d5 or e5. Um, that's simply um, the idea. Um, and um, well you know black's got to choose how to react to that now in principle and I've written about this a number of books Silicon Road to Chess Improvement actually that was quoted by uh, um, Magnus Carlsen recently exactly the point I'm going to describe now and also in uh, Study Chess with Matthew Sadler um, when white pushes e4 it's dangerous but um, black can uh, sort of counter it by dancing on the dark squares so on the central dark squares I'll show you what that means but um, with this line, if black doesn't get it exactly right, then um, um, things are going to get quite awkward. So let's have a look at, um, at some, some, some possibilities. Um, queen to b8 is a move I've had um, a reasonable amount. Now, why are people playing queen b8? Um, well, um, I think what I have to do there is to show you um, um, quite a, an old main line of the Queen's Gambit accepted. Um, which um, I've had a lot in my time. I played a lot of games in the Queen's Gambit Accepted. And this is the, um, the old main line, a6, queen e2, b5, bishop b3, bishop b7, knight c3, knight bd7, and rook d1. And uh, two of black's main moves here are um, queen c7 and queen b8. There's also queen b6 as well, even bishop d6 has been played as well. But queen c7, queen b8, the idea of putting the queen there um, is very very common now in this old main line it's got a real point because the rook is on d1 opposite the queen um, in our line it doesn't have quite as much point really because the rook's on e1 but I think the resemblance is so strong that um, that people somehow yeah you know they, they keep on uh, they keep on doing it it's not a bad move but it is a, just a little bit strange at this moment but yeah if you're a Queen's Gambit accepted player it looks very natural so there's a couple of lines uh, you can play. Um, one of the lines analysed with the engines was e4, c takes d4, knight d5, which you know gives you that sort of Nidorf uh, feeling there, um, which is pretty dangerous in actual fact. If you uh, take on here, it's I think it's 2.9 plus white. This one takes, 
bishop e7 knight takes d4 and this is really really strong you know very big initiative Nidorf style initiative with uh, king court in the center you can't leave because the bishop's on e7 and we're just gonna we're just gonna just put our pieces in the center and just um you know exploit the fact that black can't castle there um what i played um uh, one time was to play the move d5 and uh, now there's only one black reply uh, here, which is c4. If you go e takes d5, which again, in analogy with the Queen's Gambit accepted lines, um, is the normal move, this is very, very strong. We go e4, d takes e4, this was my game, and then knight g5. So I'm hitting uh, f7 now, this sort of hidden Fischer Sozin bishop, uh, again, Nidorf comparison, you know, that's um, very, very strong. So um, c4 played. And then I took with the um, the knight on e4 here. And uh, what did my opponent play here? Um, knight takes e4, knight takes e4. Um, I think he played bishop e7, and I played knight d6 check. King f8, and then bishop f4 was uh, was probably the strongest, but I played, uh, I think, knight takes f7 in this position. Knight f6, knight takes h8, and well, you can imagine that I won. I won this pretty quickly, really. Um, but I think it just shows, you know, how dangerous these attacks are and how quickly it's, um, it's, it's happening somehow. Um, again, something similar against uh, Queen C7. We can go E4, and if C takes D4, we go Knight D5 again. It's not quite as strong uh, because, you know, the king uh, can sort of escape there, but we go Knight G5, Knight B6, D6. Going to take on F7. You know, I mean, again, just very, very scary for black and uh, unprepared. There's loads of analysis in the, the PGN that I'll share, but, um, you know, unprepared, you're really going to be suffering there. The nice thing as well about this line is that if you go C takes D4, I go E takes D4, threatening D5 quite quickly now. So you've got to go Knight B6 to cover it. Then that gives me the square on E5. And here I've got a number of possibilities. I mean, Rook E3 castles Rook H3. Um, again, it's that theme that I mentioned in Silicon Road to chess improvement that engine's very keen to use the third rank for the rook. Well-known attacking uh, um, technique and human player, of course, as well. <clears throat> I mean, this is quite scary, simply, you know, I mean, uh, even if it's not uh, better or winning for white, it's very scary. There's even uh, this move that uh, Stockfish played against Komodo Dragon, which is also very, very interesting. Um, just what um, what um, Stockfish is doing is gets this enormous bishop on e6. The king can't uh, move anymore, and then uh, Stockfish just um, uh, centralised the pieces and uh, um, and then started going with uh, you know g4 to g5 basically. So um, yeah, again, very very interesting and just unpleasant for the opponent to deal with. I mean, objectively, the engine thinks it's equal, but um, but okay, you know, not pleasant at all for Black to deal with. Um, so bishop e7 is another um, main line and then we play e4 c takes d4 and knight takes d4 and this is actually a, a crucial moment for black and uh, um, um, out of all the games I've played quite a few now um, I've only ever had uh, you know the opponent playing it uh, properly once in actual fact so um, I mean what is white's threat just simply e5 which is just rather annoying you know I mean when you go knight d5 I can take it off and give you an isolated pawn in the center so um, again, you know, a, a normal Queen's Gambit accepted player will look at something like Queen B8. But now um, E5 is extremely strong here. And after Knight E5, we go Bishop F4. Big problem here. This pin on the Knight is very unpleasant. Um, these discovered attacks don't work. I just take with a Queen and then Bishop F3, Bishop takes B8, of course. That is actually the engine's best line. Um, one game that I had was Knight FD7 and then I just took took and bishop takes e6 um, so 125 80 uh, rated opponent played knight f3 check hoping for a discovered attack but i just took on there and well it's just winning right queen f4 i've got queen d7 takes b7 yeah that's 17 moves win and uh, queen d8 uh, was another game that was played by a 2700 uh, lee chess opponent and then i just took took and played bishop takes e5 there takes takes and uh, just this way of uh, taking things off is, um, you know, just very, very good. If you go knight d7, I've got bishop d6, which is extremely unpleasant. And after queen d7, I just make you, you know, bring my pieces into play. And the nice idea is that, well, king f7, I just went rook d7 uh, here. And then I just took, took bishop g7, bishop takes h8. And I was two pawns up, and that was uh, an easy win as well. 
The nice thing is that that's also very powerful against uh, the other natural move, which is queen c7. Um, now, I've played um, a number of ideas here. Um, I even played bishop takes e6, very Sozin uh, Nidorf uh, play, but um, it's not the actual best. e5 is again uh, the actual best here, takes takes. And it's the same tricks takes takes, bishop takes e6. Queen's slightly better place, you've got a few more defensive resources, but uh, with the help of the engine here, you know, you sort of know that, uh, well, you know, you're coming in with queen g7, you're also just threatening bishop d7 and bishop takes c5, you know, it's an absolutely massive uh, attack for white there. So, you know, it's it's kind of a, not a very difficult system for white to uh, to learn this, right? I mean, you just play rookie one and e4. The only, uh, the best, you know, line for black is to play the move knight e5, and uh, this is what I always meant by dancing on the um, on the dark squares around the um, uh, the e pawn. You play e4, you play the knight to e5, you try and put some pressure on d4. Um, what's white's best line? Probably the best is just to play f3 here, and after bishop c5, bishop e3, castles king h1, the position's balanced. I mean, the one thing I will say is that um, I did once, um, you know, lose a, a position like this against Marcus Stangl. Um, um, German Grandmaster in Altensteig, 1992, I think, a long time ago. But um, I was doing quite well, but, um, it, you know, there is that huge risk that this bishop on b7 will get blocked in by these pawns e4, f3, and if the rest of the pieces get exchanged, then you can just end up with a very bad endgame. Imagine a knight against that bishop, that's just going to be winning for white. So, I mean, that's basically what um, what white's got to do. you just got to play, you know, solidly queen d2, rook d1, queen f2, and then just try and neutralize um, any initiative that um, the black's got, and then afterwards you play. I mean, in principle, you know, there's uh, this is perfectly fine for black. I was always very happy playing these positions as black, but it's certainly not bad for white either. And as, as, I, as I said, I've, I've lost games like, uh, like this as well. So, uh, you know, there's uh, definitely the seeds of danger in, uh, in black's position as well. So there we are. Hope that helped. I mean, uh, interesting to see that, you know, even Crazy Leela couldn't find anything crazy against the uh, semi Tarash. I did try G4 a few times, bizarrely enough, with some success, but um, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. Um, and um, but um, I thought that this line was was very, very sensible. And um, well, I think, you know, Black needs to be really good Queen's Gambit accepted player to play this, so, uh, you know, to, to get a, a, a decent position. And, um, well, you know, not everyone is that. So, um, you know, I think the, the chances of catching uh, the black players out in some of these sneaky, um, quick ideas with e4, 3, 5 are quite high. And it's also very, very easy, you know, to, to play for white. It feels very natural. So, um, so there we are. I hope, um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, got lots more uh, coming. I'm, I'm currently working uh, with a lot of new Blitz games for, uh, for a whole new series. I've probably got a few more videos uh, just with uh, 1D4 stuff, stuff like that. But, um, but uh, otherwise, um, yeah, I'm working on a new set of videos. But I uh, hope you're enjoying this. And uh, stay tuned for lots more engine stuff. Thanks for watching.